Ladies and gentlemen, here comes Fred Rui. Good morning. That, uh, that Game of Thrones music, that was like just for me. That had nothing to do with you guys at all. Um, hey Siri, take a Game of Thrones bucket list item off the menu. Okay. Removing bucket list item walk into large crowd with Game of Thrones music playing. Should I order Whataburger now? This is, this is a little embarrassing. Um, <laughs> the, um, this format, by the way, um, round of applause for everybody putting on this event, Eddie and Bob and everyone, give them a round of applause, they deserve it. <laughs> this entire format, I believe is one of the coolest things as far as giving information, all one, also one of the hardest things for us to do up here. And I also believe that this is really secretly just a bet between Eddie and Bob on whether I can speak for less than 12 minutes. So we're gonna see how this goes. Get a little clicker here. So um, just for the record, you know, uh, my, you know, if you don't know who I am, my name is Fred Rui. Uh, I've been buying notes for almost 30 years. I'm like literally like six months away from 30 years. Um, if you're trying to guess my age right now, I'm 52. I kind of look like the before picture of Chandler's speech, I guess. So now I'm interested in everything he named. He named me completely on that. Like he must have followed me around the other night, prime rib, cigar. So, it's, you know, I got issues apparently. Uh, I've written two books. I have a passion for travel, golf, flying stunt planes, cooking, anything to do with marketing. Uh, I learned the industry, the note industry in the late 80s. Uh, I was actually living in the Bay Area of San Francisco. I was taking classes in the evening, uh, just trying to figure out how I was gonna buy a house. I was actually, I wanted to invest in real estate, but uh, if you know anything about San Francisco in the 80s, as far as being able to buy property, um, it's not any better now either and it wasn't easy then. And I was basically working in a restaurant trying to figure it all out. I didn't have enough money, so I was just taking night classes. And uh, in this class at night, there was a gentleman by the name of John Richards who was teaching this real estate investment class, and some of you know who he is. Um, he taught us notes during one week, and he taught us the financial calculator. And I gotta say, do you remember when you learned the financial calculator? I mean, forget notes for a second. That was probably the most empowering thing I ever learned in my life as far as finance. I mean, notes are cool, I love notes, but learning the financial calculator was absolutely amazing to me because it not only applies to our investments, it applies to everything. It applies to going out and buying a car, but you know, everything you do, it's amazing what that thing can do. So that was a game changer for me. That was an absolute game changer. I and mean, when he showed me about notes versus real estate and the, and the financial calculator, so since then, along with Tracy Z, my spouse. We've built and sold several companies over the years, all the while traveling and living in various parts of the world. I'm also what some people refer to as a life hacker. Now, if you're not familiar with the term of a life hacker, basically a life hacker is someone who tries to find a way to work around an established way of doing things. So now, it kind of, we're kind of looking for shortcuts. We're kind of looking for a way to improve an existing system and that's what we say to make ourselves feel better. We're really just pretty lazy and we're just looking for like, okay, I don't want to spend time learning piano for 17 years. Can I just learn it in six months? That's really what we're doing. So for me, that's what led to the creation and the ongoing creation of what I'm calling Rogue Map. And you've heard the term going rogue and, you've, uh, and that's pretty much what successful entrepreneurs are doing all the time. It's what most people in this room are doing or trying to do. We all have our own roadmap. We're all doing what people can't or won't do. And we get to reap the benefits of those things along the way. Benefits that are measured in lifestyle, health, financial freedom, and the list goes on and on. You know, in the last 48 hours, I met people that all have their own roadmaps, and it was really interesting. I met a woman that had just hiked across the El Camino uh, Santiago Trail in Portugal which I thought was amazing, and it's on my bucket list and I haven't done it. Uh, I met a guy that actually went to the Soviet Union to catch these giant salmon that I'd never even heard of and went back and Googled it in my room. Yeah, they're big ass salmon. And I met somebody else that was literally closing down half their business to move across the country to take care of their ailing mother. We all have different rogue maps. 
We all have different things we're doing. And the question is, is how, do, how do we replicate that? How do we, how do we get there where we're able to, it's, we define it as success, and we like to call it success. But is there a pattern when we study all these people that are successful? Can we life hack success? Or at the very least, can we tip the scales in our favor? And I believe we can. And I believe what I've discovered is, is that there are really only three barriers on everybody's roadmap to success. I call them roadblocks. And each roadblock is just as important as the other. So you can't just solve one of three or two of three. You have to solve all three. If you're talking about true consistent success, whatever it is, I don't care if you want to lose weight, I don't care if you want to have your portfolio grow to $10 billion, whatever it is, if you're talking about true consistent success, then we're really talking about these three things. Now, the good news is, is that just being aware of these three things is going to help you. And solving them is really not that hard. So here, let's talk about all three. Number one is belief of self. Number two is execution of that belief. And number three is avoidance of life, work, inertia. And I'm gonna go through all of them. So let's go through each one. First of all, let's talk about belief of self. Now, belief of self is basically your limits are what you think of yourself, not what someone else does. Okay, it's not an outside influence. This is your core being. This is what you believe is right. Morally, ethically, just whatever your idea is. So many people have been told they're not smart enough. They're not pretty enough. They're not fast enough. Well, you know what? Those people that didn't listen became awesome entrepreneurs and scientists. They became actors and actresses. They became athletes that have broken records. How many people in this room were told not to buy notes or not even consider buying notes? Oh, you are lying to me. I want to see a show of hands. There are way more people that are told, oh, that sounds kind of sketchy. I've never heard of that. Well, who's laughing now, right? We get all the benefits of owning paper and we don't own the property. This is the most awesome thing ever. And you get to dictate your terms, you get to dictate your yield, you get to dictate your risk. I mean, there really isn't anything better. So this category of belief in self is also what I kind of consider the warm fuzzy category, okay? It's like, you know, there's so many, I mean, this is an entire industry of people that have said, you know, say this every day. I'll tell you what, let's just, we'll do one real quick. Okay, so repeat after me. I believe in myself. I believe in my idea. I believe in my plan. There we go, I just saved you like 1,600 books to read and a Tony Robbins walk across fire weekend right there. But just, <laughs> Just know that you have to believe it. You can't pretend to believe it. This is when you're just waking up in the morning, what your thought is. This is when you're just going to bed at night. This is your thought, but you have to believe this. And I'll only leave you with one thing about setting that belief of self. Face reality as it is. Not what it was in your past, not what you wish it'll be in your future. Face that reality as it is right now. If you work with that, then I think you can get that. This is us going, hey, I wanna lose weight January 1st, we all join the gym. What happens after that? Well, now we got to execution of belief. This is where it gets a little hazy, okay? I was told that in execution, the key to execution was, if I could fit everything onto a post-it note, that my plan, if my execution plan fit on a post-it note, that, that I would be successful, that then that plan would work. Does that sound reasonable? Kind of. I mean, I carry it with me. I went to Office Depot and I bought their post-it notes and they just, you know, you buy a whole thing of them and they stick to the wall. And so that was my plan. And I don't know if you can see that. There's just a couple little things to get done. This is just plan A, by the way. There is a plan B. So this, that was crazy. That was literally crazy. And I'm going to go back to this post-it note and say how it works later, but so, how many people are multitaskers? This is all I'm going to leave you. This is a tough, this one, uh, multitask. How many people are multitaskers? Show of hands. How many people are good at multitasking? You just think you're a great multitasker. I was one of those people. I'm going to tell you right now, and this took years to learn, multitasking is a term invented to make non-productive people feel better about themselves. Okay? 
Because it makes sense. Our brains are like, oh, look, if I do this, I got to get this going. Okay, this is going good, and then I'm going to go over here and do this, and then I'm going to go do this. And here's the problem with multitasking that none of us say, because at the end of the day, go, oh, look, I did some of that, I did some of that. I got so much work done today. Here's the one thing that I'm going to tell you, and why you have to do things non-multitasking, you need to think in a single task thing. One is, is that, and I, can't, I don't even have time to go into this, but basically, every time you stop one thing and go to another, your brain has to readjust. Your brain, so how many times have you read a book, you put it down, you're gone for a week, whatever, you pick that book back up. You don't pick that book up right where you left off. You have to go back, either the paragraph, the chapter, rescan where was I, what was going on. Now that's, that's a big illustration of what happens on a very small level, just because you think you're working on your speech or you're working on looking at a note and you jump in the email, and then you jump back to that note or you jump back to that speech or whatever you're doing, your mind has to go through the whole process. And so I'm telling you, if you just do one thing at a time, you will, do, you will be faster at it ultimately. It doesn't seem that way, but it will be faster. You will be more efficient. And here's the big one, because this is important to success, it will be better quality. Because every time you jump around, 80% of your brain will re-engage in that what you're doing at that moment 20% of your brain is off waiting for what's the next thing we're going to jump over to. And that 20% we absolutely need to have involved if we want to excel, if we want to make it that much better. So we've got one, we've got two. The third one's a big one. The third one is avoidance of life work inertia. Now, life inertia... Is, is simple to, to illustrate, and everybody can admit to this, because like, oh, I'm working on this, and oh, my water heater broke, or this property needs a roof, or uh, grandma's sick, or oh, I've got to go to this you know, function, whatever it may be. Life's inertia happens, and you know what? You just need to figure that stuff out and make sure you're dedicating time for your business and whatever your roadmap is and what you're trying to accomplish. Work inertia, that's the sneaky one, because you think you are helping your business by working on these other things. And I'm not talking multitasking, I'm just talking about other projects you've identified. And work inertia is sneaky. I also call it shiny object syndrome. Because you've got a way of doing something, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm like, oh, look at that, that's a cool way of doing that. Maybe I should do it this way. Maybe I should move my contact management system over here. Or maybe this person has a better note calculation, or maybe this person has a better real estate course, or this person has a better whatever. And you, 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 we, we convince ourselves that we are helping our business, but in reality, we're getting distracted. We're getting distracted by the core, core aspect of it. So I have this problem immensely. This is a big problem for me. And so what I was able to do was, is I actually took the post-it note strategy and I put three of them on the wall. And this is kind of, and, and they're not, they're, they're just a checklist. It's like a to-do list. And I put three blank ones on the wall, and I sat down with Tracy, and we decided what are we trying to accomplish, and the first post-it note will immediately affect revenue or income, it'll, it'll be buying a deal. Not talking about buying a deal, not analyzing a deal, that's buying a deal. Okay, so the first post-it note meant was something that was immediately gonna affect my bottom line, was immediately gonna affect my income. The second post-it note was basically if I do this, this will in the future affect income. If I build a training class, and then I can sell that training class. If I, if I put up a website that attracts investors and or notes, that will get stuff in the future. The third one is all the dangerous stuff. Man, I really need to redo my logo. You know, or my, you know, I'm not real hot on this color scheme I have on this. My brochures don't look good. Or, you know, I, I really should watch these videos this guy put out. It seems very motivational. I should really watch that. The way for me to stay focused in avoidance of specifically work inertia is anytime I have a moment at my desk and I'm deciding to work on something and I find that I'm on there for too long, I look over that boards and it better be on board one. And if I, the only time I'm allowed on board three is if it's the weekend. If it's the weekend and I'm on board three, then that's fine, that's my time, I can do whatever. But be working on board one. If you do that, that's gonna help you a lot. I've only got time to leave you one more thought, and this will probably help you through some of the aspects beyond the post-it notes. This is probably the coolest phrase I heard several years ago. Actually, Tracy had found it, uh, and it, and it definitely fits me to a T. I am one of those people that um, I'm OCD, I'm analytical, 
Um, I'm a whole lot more letters in there, I'm sure. Um, I like to have all my ducks in a row. I, li I like to research something thoroughly and pick it apart, and that's just, that this goes along with the way my brain operates. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this. And, and put this phrase on a post-it note, I have it on a, on a cast pewter, whatever, but this phrase will help you in a lot, a lot of instances. And the phrase is, imperfect action beats perfect inaction every time. I'm gonna say that one more time. Imperfect action beats perfect inaction every time. You will never be 100% ready. You will never have all your ducks in a row. If you haven't pulled the trigger and bought a note, buy a note, figure it out later. You're just like, oh, I don't know, I wanna do non-performing notes, you know, stuff like that. Buy one, figure it out later. Do your research, do what you can in the beginning, but pull the trigger because a lot of times all the stuff you're worried about, the very end of it, never, none of it's gonna come to play anyway. So thank you very much, you guys have been great.